Here in this video, I make a replica of a stemmed Saratoga plant from the later cake period. During this time in Kentucky prehistory, stem projectile points like this were a common style of hunting implement. The later cake period is a classification of prehistory used to define a time period when hunter-gatherers in this region were undergoing greater regional specialization and adaptation. Watch me flint nap this replica of a late archaic projectile point and discuss the archaeology of the late archaic period in Kentucky. I start with a large flake of Newman chert, trying to establish an even edge and profile all around the piece, eliminating large high spots and flaws. Newman chert originates from the Haney and Paoli members of the Newman limestone, primarily in eastern Kentucky. This is but one type of chert that was available to later cake people in Kentucky, as there are a multitude of chert sources in the state. In the Green River region, which I focus on in this video, St. Genevieve chert, Boyle chert, and Mulder chert would have been several local types of flint that were used extensively. As the flake I'm working is reduced into an early stage biface, I can begin removing flakes to thin it down. The later cake period in Kentucky is defined from about 5,000 to 3,000 years before present by archaeologists. While later cake people were hunter-gatherers, their society was more socially complex than that of their ancestors, and they were also less mobile than them. This decrease in mobility seems to have led to more regional styles of projectile points and other forms of material culture. While there isn't evidence for year-round settlement, these people seem to have moved in seasonal rounds, involving a cool season dispersal into upland areas and warm season aggregation at locations along major rivers. Later cake social complexity is evidenced by exotic goods deposited in burials, such as copper and marine shell. These would have been obtained through exchange across large social networks between groups of people in other regions, such as the Great Lakes and the Gulf Coast. Selective inclusion of these types of items in burials is evidence for a degree of social differentiation among late archaic societal structures. Stem projectile points like the Saratoga point I'm replicating seem to have been a common technological trend during the late archaic period. These people flit napped other types of tools, such as scrapers for processing hides, drills, spoke shaves, and more. Like during the Middle Archaic period, they used ground stone technology to make grooved stone axes and food processing tools, like mortars, pestles, monos, and matates. Bone and antler tools would have also been found at these sites, including forms like perforators, weaving slash mat making tools, flint napping tools, fish hooks, at lateral hooks, projectile points, hide fleshing tools, and even flutes and whistles. By continually removing flakes, I'm reducing my biface thinner and thinner while shaping the outline closer to how I picture the final form. While I'm still focusing on ridges and high spots, the profile of the stone biface is becoming more regular. This isn't close to being a finish point at this stage, but it could be used as a tool for a variety of cutting tasks. Prehistoric people would have often used bifaces like this, and then later napped it down to an actual projectile point after it became dull or their existing gear needed replacing. Projectile points like my replica would have been used as an atlatl or spear thrower tip for hunting, although they likely had secondary function as knives as well. Late archaic people hunted white-tailed deer primarily, as well as turkey and other small animals. Shellfish in Kentucky's regions like the Green River were gathered extensively as a food source. Hickory nuts continued to be gathered as the most important plant food resource. Squash, sunflower, Marsh elder, quinupod, and other plants were also important food resources for them. One major advantage of these plants is that the seeds could be stored in sustained groups in the lean times from winter to early spring. Likely starting during the Middle Archaic period, indigenous peoples began intentionally replanting the seeds for these plants annually. 
by the late archaic period, seed remains recovered at archaeological sites begin to show changes indicative of domestication. But these cultigens made up a minor part of their diet for now. Later on, these plants would become the focus of intensive horticulture. Green River late archaic sites are quite famous, known for their large shell middens with cemeteries of up to hundreds of people. At the Indian Knoll site, there are over 880 burials recovered during one excavation. While excavating burials like these are now something archaeologists take care to avoid, these excavations did give unprecedented insight into the lives of late archaic people. One important discovery was that of atlatl hooks, handles, and stone weights in these graves, which have been interpreted as spear thrower components. 44 burials had at least one of these components, while 13 had at least two of these pieces in alignment with each other. At the time, this was the oldest definitive evidence of atlatl use in North America. Traces of naturally occurring asphaltum, used to join the pieces to a central wooden shaft, were found adhering to some of these atlatl components. Later cake burials in the Green River region were also found to contain numerous marine shell beaded necklaces, bracelets, and pendants sourced from other groups far away. With the thinning done, the technique I'm now using to shape and sharpen the stone is pressure flaking. This involves pressing an antler tool into the edge and building up pressure until a flake pops off my biface. While I used this method earlier to prepare platforms from which to strike off flakes, I'm now using it more intensely. To prepare the haft area of this projectile point where it would attach to a dart or spear shaft, I use pressure flaking to make this area narrower. I also use an indirect percussion technique to form barbs in this area as well. Using these techniques in tandem, I'm able to create a stemmed haft area, like archaeological examples of Saratoga points. One final change in material culture started during the later cake period, the introduction of pottery. Early ceramic vessels started to be made in the southeast, with stone cooking vessels appearing at about the same time, although these didn't always precede the introduction of pottery. This, combined with the intensification of horticulture, meant that people had more control over their food supply, had better ways to extract nutrition from food, and had better foods to store over the winter. These, among changes in social structure, mark the end of the Archaic Period and the beginning of the Woodland Period in Kentucky prehistory.